Good evening. This is Mr Bradshaw and I welcome you to the year 11 revision evening for music, particularly the listening and appraising exam. I'm going to give you a few tips and a few bits of advice as to how to get yourself ready for the exam when it arrives. We begin with the first eight listening questions that you will do first in the actual exam. There are four areas of study. Uh, they are, of course, Western classical music from 1650 to 1910, popular music, traditional music, which is kind of what we're doing at the moment with the blues, African fusion, salsa and reggae. And the final one, which we do after Christmas, which will be Western classical music after 1910, which kind of brings in minimalism, Marin Copeland and some of the slightly wackier stuff that uh, emerged after the Romantic period. And each one of those areas of study will be stated at the top of each question, so you'll be knowing which genre you're dealing with straight away. The quickfire questions uh, are all usually one mark, uh, but some of the summarise the features, so what features are you know, relevant to blues music or Western classical music or even minimalism, are a maximum of three marks. So they're pretty quick fire themselves. So you don't need to be writing long sentences for those unless you can uh, really uh, go to town. Now, in terms of being able to be confident at answering questions, you need to be able to be able to access about five keywords you can think of for each of the major musical elements. So melody, you'd be thinking conjunct, disjunct, stepwise descending, ascending, and repeated. You know, if it's tonality, major, minor, modal, chromatic. And if you can think of five keywords for most of the elements, and, and texture obviously is quite easy, um, you're in with a much stronger chance overall when you come to any question. So uh, that's one of the key revision uh, things you need to think about. Some terms, of course, may well appear up to four times. Syncopation, often features about two or three times. The pedal for the harmonic device. Uh, intervals appear up to three times. Cadences we revise an awful lot. And of course, the types of texture. Um, there's usually a chance to at least demonstrate knowledge of about three or four of those. So those are very, very important terms. If you've not got those sorted, you could be disadvantaged. And of course, the dictation melody question. Uh, is usually worth five, sometimes six marks, and that's worth a grey boundary. So making sure you are confident in you know, writing on a stave using smallish uh, pencil markings is a good idea. Pencil for that, very important as well. Here are a few key tips. I always say, say what you hear, but of course that's only possible if you have got sufficient terms at your fingertips. So the idea of saying, I hear 4-4 four, four tempo at a moderate meter. I'll go <laughs> wrong way around. Uh, I hear a major key. I hear a piano accompanying a violin. I hear a melody that's descending. Those statements are based on a knowledge of key terms that have been built up over a period of time. So that is the kind of revision that you need to be aiming for when it comes to you know, writing fluently about music. Best form of revision can be to listen to examples of the genres we've covered. I will attach a related listening guide produced by Edexcel, which have got some track names on it that you might want to uh, add to playlists. And these will often be tracks that may well appear in the exam. You know, I'm sure um, that uh, Phantom of the Opera track and uh, that minimalist piece were, would have been uh, advised tracks to listen to uh, on the listening guide. So I think some of them could be useful pointers to what might appear on the exam anyway. I would advise you often to listen to a very, very familiar piece. You see the three I've put down, Mamma Mia, the Harry Potter theme, or even Fairy Lees, and force yourself to actually list a key word for each musical element. So if you're talking about Fairy Lees, you'll be saying it's in a minor key, it's in 3-4, it starts with a repeated two notes, it's melody and accompaniment texture, it's got four different phrases, uh, and instantly that's four marks. So Mamma Mia could do the same for. So uh, I think find something familiar, but be able to analyse it as you hear it. Also, you will have done about 36 practice questions. 
over the lessons. They are worth looking back over. Look at where your successes were. Look at things you, where you made a mistake. That could be useful also. Okay, the appraising questions. You see a picture there of Sergeant Pepper and of the first uh, section of the Clock Symphony. Hyde and the Beatles are the only pieces on which you need to revise for those questions. There is no need to look at Santana Supernatural or Rodeo by Aaron Copeland. You're only doing the Beatles and Hyde. I can't stress that enough. The shorter questions on these pieces are often to do with use of instruments. For example, use of the brass, why the transposing instruments, and also describe the use of the strings are often common questions for the Haydn. Beatles, often to do with effects and loose in the sky with diamonds. It could be to do with the Indian instruments used in Within You, Without You. Um, yeah, quick fire. Uh, but making sure you know what is playing in each extract will be useful to answer those questions. The longer questions, the eight markers, uh, are a chance to regurgitate the material that you have revised on each set piece. So, for example, remembering two for andante, ostinato, staccato, pizzicato, dotted rhythms, inverted pedal on the oboe, second section, disjunct at times, modulation to G minor, the tonic minor, returning in E flat major, decorated with triplets later on, varied statements of the theme. That was just an example of things I've remembered via teaching them. Some of you will be able to remember even more via your revision notes. And most of the questions will allow you to access points like the ones I've just mentioned. You know, the questions are often how is balance achieved, that kind of thing. How is contrast achieved? Um, when revising these pieces, I would advise you to listen to them while you revise. We did that for the actual exam, which last year's year 11 did in year 10. And they actually did OK when they listened to the piece while they answered the question. You don't get that luxury, but you can while revising. So I would definitely, whilst revising the hide, be playing that extract through so you can make some sense of what you're revising. Similarly with uh, the Ringo track, Loose in the Sky and Within You Without You. Don't just revise dryly. Make sure music is playing. OK, here are the key sources. CGP guide would say it would be the first port of call. We've got a full set of revision guides that you can sign for uh, before an exam. But of course, we need them back. There are some AQA study notes that you were given before each set work, which should be in your folders. I'll print some more if you need. I would advise also the Howard Goodall program on Sergeant Pepper. That's very good for the Loose in the Sky with Diamonds and Within You Without You. Um, but of course, within you, with a little help from my friends, sorry, was the one we did first. And uh, because that's the first one we did, that tends to often stay with you more than the later one. So um, that's not featured on that program. Uh, with regard to Haydn, the video analysis YouTube uh, video is fantastic. It really is very useful. And we used it with the last year's year 11 in their revision sessions, which you shall be getting from January once you've done your mock. I hope that is clear enough. Obviously, uh, I can discuss these things in your lessons as well, but please ask questions. Um, I can find as much material as you need. And of course, many practice questions are coming your way. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much indeed.